All right, we're back with an applied physics problem uh, that's in calculus um, section 4.1, problem number 12. And this is uh, a current equation, so current with respect to time. Um, and what's going on here is uh, there is some current, so electrons are flowing. Um, and they're flowing in some sort of sinusoidal way. And you'll notice that the, the so in other words, this is alternating current, or what comes out of your wall. Um, so this means that the current goes up and comes down and it goes up and comes down and it's cyclical because it's a uh, it's a trigonometric function that has that's a pro, uh, that's a sum of cosines and sines and we know that cosines and sines have very much um, different they're phase shifted by 90 degrees so in other words you know our sine graph starts at zero and one cycle looks like that and our cosine graph starts at 1 and it looks something like this so we're, and we're adding these two together after multiplying them by 3. Now the question here is find the maximum current I um, in the entire time T. And whenever we see um, sines and cosines or trig functions we have to remember that the max is going to happen over and over again because it's cyclic. So we're not necessarily just looking for one maximum there's going to be infinitely many maximums um, but what it's asking for is the maximum I value. Well, each one of those maximums is going to have the same maximum current value. So if we can just solve for one of them, then we know all of them because it's a cyclical function. So as with everything else we've done, we're going to take um, the derivative of I with respect to T. You could write this as di dt or I prime of T. And that's going to be 3 cosine T is going to be negative 3 sine t and 3 sine t is going to be 3 cosine t when we take the derivative with respect to t. Now remember that if we're looking for maximums and minimums we're looking for when the slope of the graph, when the tangent slope of the graph is zero. So that means that we're going to set the derivative equal to zero and solve for those points because the derivative is the uh, equation for slope or the rate of change. So zero is equal to minus 3 sine t plus 3 cosine t. And so I kind of like the idea of adding the sine over. So 3 sine t equals 3 cosine t. Divide both sides by 3 and the 3's cancel. And then let's go ahead and divide both sides by cosine of t. Because we're dealing with two trig functions here and it's a lot easier to deal with trig functions if we can narrow it down to just one. So cosine divided by cosine is 1, and sine divided by cosine is tan, tangent. So we've shown that tangent of t equals 1. And how do we undo tangent? We use the arctan function. So t, the time we're looking for, is equal to arctan of 1. And this is something you can plug into your calculator out of problem asks for an exact value. And what it ends up being is that if you look at the tangent graph, it is its output is 1 when its input is pi fourths. And once again, you can type this in your calculator. So time is pi fourths. Now remember, there are infinite such times at which there are maximums and minimums. And this could be a minimum or a maximum because setting the derivative equal to 0 looks for both maximums, minimums, and saddle points. So, uh, in this case, this ends up being the maximum, but it's good to know how to test that. So this is our critical point. And now we want to test um, whether it's concavity up, right, or concavity down. Uh, if you haven't seen my video on concavity, I recommend uh, taking a look at that one. It's called, um, what is it, curve sketching, something like that. Um, and remember, if we have concavity down, that means that we're looking at a maximum. If we have concavity up, that means we're looking at a minimum point um, when we plug in the value into the uh, second derivative. So we're going to go ahead and take i double prime of t. You could write this as d2i dt squared. And that's going to be the derivative of the first derivative. Uh, making it the second derivative. So negative 3 sine of t 
That's going to be negative 3 cosine of t when we take the derivative. Positive 3 cosine of t is going to be negative 3 sine of t when we take the derivative. So here's our test. If we plug in this critical point, if we plug in this critical point of pi fourths into our uh, second derivative of i with respect to time, if we get out a positive number, then it's concavity up and we're analyzing a minimum point. If it is concavity down or a negative number when we plug in this critical time, then we're looking at a maxima. So let's go ahead and plug in pi fourths. So we have negative 3 cosine of pi fourths minus 3 sine of pi fourths. So let's make sure the derivatives are okay. So negative sine goes to negative cosine. Um, and cosine goes to negative sine. Uh, so we plug these all in, and this is going to be pi double prime at pi fourths. And so um, cosine of pi fourths happens to be root 2 over 2. So we're looking at negative 3 root 2 over 2. And then sine of pi fourths also happens to be root 2 over 2. So we've got 3 times root 2 over 2. We have two negative numbers. When we combine them, we get a negative number. It happens to be uh, 3 root 2, because minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6 over 2 is minus 3. Uh, so this is, yeah, minus 6 divided by 2 is minus 3 root 2. And so this is what happens when we plug in our critical value. And remember, negative means concave down. So the point we're looking at is concave down, which means that we did find a maximum point. And so we've now um, determined that this is in fact the max point by using the second derivative. And so now at this point, to answer the final question, um, what is the maximum value that the current can have? Well, now that we know that the maximum occurs at t equals pi fourths, so this is t max time at the maximum current is pi fourths, we can now plug it back into our original equation. So now we're looking at i of pi fourths, or i of t max, uh, and we have a 3 cosine of uh, pi fourths plus 3 sine of pi fourths. And just like the last one, because these things are cyclical, cosine of pi fourths is root, root 2 over 2, so we have 3 root 2 over 2. Sine of pi fourths is also root 2 over 2, so we have 3 root 2 over 2. And what we end up with is 6 root 2 over 2, which can be written as 3 root 2. And this is our current. This is our current maximum, or i sub max. And so this is what they're looking for. And once again, this maximum occurs over and over again off to infinity. And because this function is symmetrical, we also know that the minimum is going to be negative 3 root 2. So if we were to draw this graph, it would, it would uh, vary between a maximum of 3 root 2 and a minimum of negative 3 root 2. Because there's no shifters on this function. Both of these functions are centered um, about the y equals um, about the y equals 0 line. So because we know the maximum and we know the style of functions, we also know the minimum. But the problem was only asking about the maximum. Uh, the current, the uh, unit for current is amps. So the maximum uh, of this function is 3 root 2 amps. All right, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you next video.